this is going to be my attempt at giving a review of my 2004 Yamaha FZ6 Phaser. Now I presume if you're watching this video you're looking into buying one of these or just want a bit more information on it and I'm going to try and do my best to give you a review of what I like and what I don't like about the bike etc etc. Before we get moving I'll just give you a quick walk around of the bike. I won't go around the back because I don't want to blur my plate. It's in the blue and grey colour. Uh, it's had red rim tapes put on it by the previous owner. Uh, they're reflective so I've left them on there. It's just helps people see you a bit better. That's the aim anyway. So I've put some crash protection axle sliders front and rear and I've just put some reflective stickers here and there. Three on the front, two on the sides there, one on the hugger and just one on the back there. Just helps, you know, I'm going to be using the bike every day, summer and winter, so just helps just a little bit, I hope. Let's get on the bike, I'll talk you through what I like, what I don't like, and uh, we'll get moving and we'll start talking about the review. I'll just show you the start-up sequence. Here we go. I'll just start her up for you. Okay, so at the top here we've got left and right indicators, we've got oil pressure light, oil management, uh, sorry, engine management light, neutral light, full beam, immobiliser light, uh, the rev counter is digital and it runs on the outside, just here, and you've got your miles per hour obviously in the middle. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, just run you through the controls quickly, obviously kill switch, start button, hooter, <laughs> indicators, full beam, low beam, flasher and uh, a little feature I really like actually which I've never had on any of my bikes is the hazard warning lights and that's really handy for filtering um, it's, it's the only time I'd use it unless I've broken down of course but uh, for filtering it's good it's just a another visual aid for people to see you so we'll get moving and I'll talk you through other bits and pieces and other little modifications that I've done to the bike I've got everything written down that I want to cover on my tank pad here so I shouldn't forget anything and I want to try and make it as good a review as possible. My first review video I've done so let's try and do a good one. Okay so let's start off with a bike. As, I, as previously mentioned it's a 2004 FZ6 Yamaha Phaser. This one has done to this moment in time 32,222 miles. I have covered on it about 1,300 miles I've done on the bike. Uh, I've had it just under a month. Fuel ejected. Uh, the engine in this phaser is from the 2003 Yamaha R6 uh, with a few changes to the engine. As far as I know, it's the cams. Uh, I think that's all they do. I'm not too sure, but um, it, it, I know for sure that it is the engine from the 2003 Yamaha phaser. Uh, uh, Yamaha R6, should I say? Um, I'll run you through a couple of the mods I've done up the front here. It's only a couple. I've fitted a 12 volt cigarette lighter so I can charge my phone, GPS etc and just a holder for the GPS. That's the only modifications I've done to the bike. I'll start with the brakes on the bike. Not brilliant, I've got to say. Not, not brilliant. They, they do the job but they're not brilliant. Um, you know, bearing in mind obviously it's a 10 year old bike. Um, uh, my other bike that I've got is a 2014 Triumph Street Triple R. So, Obviously, I'm going from that bike to this bike and then I feel the difference between the two. I'm not comparing the two because they're obviously worlds apart and they're two completely different bikes, but I'm just gauging from the from the street triple to this. The brakes lack a little bit of feel, um, but they work okay. They're not too bad at all. Suspension, again, it does its job. It's, it doesn't need to be adjustable. It's not a track bike, you know. It doesn't need to be adjustable. You don't need it's comfortable it's a comfortable ride uh, which is what the bike is about it's a i guess it'd come under the sports tour bracket um there's not really much sports bike about it but uh suspension's good um does its job seating position i find it very comfortable i'm six foot one um and i find it really comfortable uh, the mirrors really really good mirrors i don't normally run mirrors on my bikes but um I've started to recently and these are probably the best mirrors I've, I've ever used I'd say. You can see really well out of them. One thing that took a little bit of getting used to from the Triumph was the mirrors are on the bars on the Triumph so as you turn the bars obviously the mirrors turn but with this it's on the top fairing so that's, that took a little bit of getting used to for me but yeah really really good mirrors. Handling wise not bad at all. 
not bad at all for what it is. Um, it's never going to beat a, uh, you know, it's never going to beat a sports bike in the Benz, I don't think. But um, it's not bad. It's not bad at all for what it is. It's a really good bike, and I'll just move on to uh, carrying a pillion passenger. Um, I've taken, I've only had one pillion on it, and that was my wife, and uh, we went out for a, a ride, probably 60, 70 miles. And I've got to be honest, you don't feel there's a pillion on it whatsoever on this bike. Uh, really, really um, user friendly with a pillion. The bike's got two stands, it's got a side stand and a centre stand, which I think is very handy to have. Centre stand is really good for maintenance, by tightening up your chain, taking off your rear wheel, oil levels, servicing, centre stand. They look ugly, but they definitely have their uses. Miles per gallon. I'm not going to give you miles per gallon because I'm not that clever to work it out. What I will tell you is, tank costs about, from empty, or one bar on the fuel gauge, it costs about £18 to fill up. And the best mileage I've had out of that tank, out of a full tank, is 220 miles. Really, really good fuel economy, actually. So I guess I should cover the things I don't like as well to make it a fair review. And the first thing being, the handlebars. They're a little bit short for me. I'm used to riding a supermoto, so I'm used to big wide bars. So I would like slightly set of wider bars on it, and that's definitely something I'll be doing, is changing it for a set of uh, wider bars. This is more down to my personal preference on the bad points, to be honest. Um, I'd like a bit of a taller screen for it. Uh, this is good for taking away the wind buffer, but if I could maybe have another two inches on that screen, that'd be nice. Just to take the, the buff away from your head a little bit. One thing I don't like about the design of the bike is the under seat exhausts. Not to my personal taste. It reminds me too much of a Ducati and I'm not a Ducati fan so that's something I'm not too keen on. But there is a plus point to it, I must be honest. When you're backing the bike into a, a parking space or between two cars or whatever that may be, um, because you haven't got the exhaust sticking out the side, your knees are the widest point of the bike. So if you could fit through, your body can fit through then you know the bike's going to fit through so that's the uh that's the advantage to be taken from the under seat exhaust as far as i can see just staying on the exhaust for a moment i would like them a little bit louder obviously you could buy aftermarket pipes and stuff like that for the bike but it's not something i'm prepared to do i'm not going to spend loads of money on the bike it's this bike's basically my car um i use it every single day I will be using it every single day, summer, winter, rain, shine, sleet and snow. Um, it feels like you're riding an electric bike. There's no induction noise, there's hardly any engine noise and there's no exhaust note. The bike is quite heavy. For a 600, it's a heavy bike. When you're riding, you don't notice it at all, to be fair. But when you're trying to push it around, filtering, it's not really a problem. But when you try to push the bike around, where I, uh, where I live, I come out my front door, I have to push it up a hill to get it away from my neighbours to start it before I sort of head out in the mornings and yeah it's a heavy old push up that hill I can tell you that and the last little thing that I'm not so keen on myself is the rev counter uh, as explained when I was giving you the walk around it's a digital rev counter and I'm not a fan of digital rev counters personally I prefer the analog rev counter and the digital speedo that's what I like which is on my triumph that's what I like on a bike personally I like to see the the needle climbing when I'm when I'm giving the bike some um, some abuse so in summary then if you're looking for a, a bike you can use every day all kinds of weathers or a tourer then brilliant bike I absolutely 100% recommend it and if you're looking for a weekend toy this won't be the bike for you if you're looking to scratch around the twisty roads on a weekend then I would say get yourself a sports bike. Personally, I'd buy a supermoto, but that's just me. So yeah, I'm pleased with it. I think it's a good bike, personally. And I've had quite a few, and that's the end of my review. I hope you found it useful if you're looking into buying one of these. Thanks very much for watching. Ride safe. Catch you next time.